Good evening. I'm Amelia Abbott. And I'm Beth Schutte. Thank you for joining us. Our top story tonight is that we're back, baby. Yeah, we are. Yeah. It's been a couple of years now, but your favorite, very professional news anchors are indeed back. It's true. We're back and better than ever. Yep. Um, what do we do now? Um, uh, I guess we do some news stories now. Uh, right. Our other top story tonight is about the Mission 1914 Camper Scholarship Fund. Each year, New Life Ranch raises money to ensure that no camper is ever denied the opportunity to come to camp, regardless of their financial situation. New Life News reporter Haley Christie has this story on the current status of that fund. Each summer at New Life Ranch, the camp awards scholarships to campers through the Mission 1914 Camper Scholarship Fund. The fund ensures that finances never get in the way of a camper from coming to camp. In 2023, New Life Ranch awarded their highest amount in scholarships ever. For 2023 scholarships, we awarded about $634,000 in awards, which is amazing. And we have just about $170,000 left to raise for the year. Shelby Moody, Director of Development at New Life Ranch, says that if they are able to raise the remaining funds by the end of the year, it will allow them to begin focusing on a new way of helping to fund scholarships for New Life Ranch. We're really looking forward to finishing the 2023 annual fund for scholarships, so raising that remaining $170,000 for the end of the year so that we can start working on this really exciting matching challenge that we received from the foundation earlier this year, which part of that matching challenge is $1 million toward a scholarship endowment which would be our first big push for scholarship endowment in our history. Moody says having an endowment in place would go a long way in helping to meet the significant increase in scholarship dollars awarded each year. If we match that million dollars, it would actually um, put $2 million toward an endowment, which would create great sustainability for camper scholarships, not just for 2023 or 2024, but for the next generation of campers. In order to complete the funding for this year, Moody says there are a variety of ways people can help, including becoming a monthly giver, making a one-time donation, or learning more about the endowment. This is Haley Christie reporting for New Life News. If you'd like to help us reach this goal, you can visit newliferanch.com slash donate or just give Shelby a call. Well, Amelia, a lot has changed around the ranch since we were last together. That is very true, Beth. Our intrepid reporter and favorite Texan, Miss Melanie Hale, has the story about some updates coming down the pipeline over at Frontier Cove. If you've ever been to Frontier Cove, one of the first things you can't help but notice when driving into camp is the giant parking lot. While the previous owners of the property had their reasons for such a large area for parking, it isn't something necessary at the Cove. For the past several years, Rhett Pierce, the executive director at Frontier Cove, has been dreaming up a way to better utilize the space to better meet the needs of campers and guests. Yeah, so here at Frontier Cove, we're super excited to kind of transform this whole area into a green space ball field for our kids. And so when we bought this property about five years ago, one of the things that we knew immediately that we wanted to do to um, improve our programs and just make the experience all around better for them was to give a large outdoor recreational space. And so for the last five years, we've used a actually just a section of the horse pasture that is about 400 yards that way. And so imagine a little guy or a little girl trekking all the way across that way just to get out there to play soccer or safari or any of the big games that we do. Um, and so we're going to be pulling all this up and bringing it right here next to the property um, where all the cabins are and the dining hall spaces are and stuff. Another component that has been sorely lacking is a large central office that can accommodate the whole staff and be easier to access for guests. The office at Frontier Cove is in the very back corner, which causes confusion for guests and causes confusion for uh, campers and families as they're trying to find you know, administration or people to help them. And so um, the other thing that's a big negative is we have offices in four or five different buildings for all of our staff. And so this will bring our staff together to really lean into our, our core value of focus on relationships and hopefully, um, in theory, of course, just bring our ministry up to another level and improve the experience for our campers 
campers and our retreat guests. Construction on the ball field is set to begin in January with hopes of having it completed before the summer. I am Melanie Hale reporting for New Life News. I, for one, am very excited about the new ball field at the Cove. Oh, yeah. Are you ready to play some games of safari? No. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. Staff at the Cove were quite concerned last week when they noticed that the windmill wasn't turning. For several hours, they investigated what was causing the issue, but despite their best efforts, were unable to figure out why the windmill had stopped. They were shocked to discover later that it was simply because the wind wasn't blowing. New Life Ranch's unofficial recruitment mascot, Cowboy Noodle Man, got into some serious trouble with authorities last week after trying to steal a bowl of spaghetti on a college campus. He insists he was simply trying to rescue his noodle friends, and he was released on bail. His trial is set to begin at the beginning of January, but his lawyer insists the odds are stacked impossibly against him. After months of negotiations, the barn cats at New Life Ranch have finally come to an agreement to end their months-long strike. The main source of their disagreement came from what they considered to be an unfair wage gap between them and the horses. Although the horses recognized their need for the cats, they were unwilling to give them a greater percentage of revenue generated from trail rides and horsemanship class. The cats agreed to a compromise, promising to stop leaving dead birds in the pasture in exchange for a 10% increase. When asked about ending the strike, Cat Union President Gus simply said, Well, Amelia, I don't know about you, but I'm really missing summer camp right about now. Me too. Fortunately, the media team put together this recap from the summer so we can look back and enjoy.
theme this week is who am I? We're trying to figure out and, and go through the identity that we get from God, what God says about, to, about us. I've always known that like God has loved me a lot as a child of Him, but I don't know. I just feel like it's more of a deeper dive into it. So yeah, this it has been a really good week just learning about God's love. There's so many things I've learned I just can't even, I don't even remember. I've learned so much things. Talking about how we're children of God and that's where we need to find our identity. Like I said, like putting your identity in like Christ and being a child of God instead of like sports or academics or friends because Christ won't like fade or go away. He's stable. My hope is that whenever they go home, they can remain confident in the identity the Lord has given them and the purpose that the Lord has set out before them. We kind of learned how to get accepted into heaven and we've learned the gift of God and that God took away all of our sins and died on the cross for us. I love that like we just get to learn more about God and like we just kind of like grow closer to him. So when I go home, uh, I want to illustrate Christ's example in me. So I want to be like a light to others and spread the gospel as much as I can. It's not about go-karts or about ropes, but it's about making sure that they meet the living God, that they are able to have a vertical relationship with God, that they are rooted and grounded in faith, and that they are alive in the Word. So if they could take one single thing away from camp, I'd want them to take away that this new life that Christ has won for them, this new identity that he has given them, is one that he has empowered them to actually live out on a daily basis. That they can live like adopted kids, like they can live like they're beloved, that they can live like they're chosen, that they can live like they're forgiven, that they can live by grace through faith. And they can do that because of what Christ has done. And so it should transform how they walk every single moment of every single day. For those of you who weren't aware, that song in the video was written and recorded by the New Life Reinch worship team from this past summer. It's true, and you all can find the song too on Spotify, iTunes, or anywhere you stream your music. Coming up after the break, we'll hear about some changes coming to the Flint and Steel Trail Run coming up on December 2nd. And then we'll learn from the Flint Valley team about some upcoming developments at the site. It's so fun to be living at camp for a whole summer. It's so fun to be getting to do the activities um, and getting to talk to campers and hang out with them. People are just so intent to tell kids about Jesus and tell kids about how they are saved by Christ. So what I've loved most about this summer being on summer staff, and there's countless guys and countless relationships and friendships that I've built over the years on summer staff that last through the years and last through the school season. Um, and so I would think anyone coming into this summer, like don't think that you're just gonna gain friends and gain relationships with fellow believers just for that summer, because they last. This seriously is the best job in the world, not only because you are sharing the gospel, but you are surrounded by 
your best friends who are believers every single day and you're fighting for the most important thing ever, the Lord put places like this here so that we can just strive to be better Christians and strive to be better people and point other people towards the cross daily. I wish more people knew that there's not like one set personality that works at camp. I think there's kind of a stereotype of camp people that they're all this loud, crazy, obnoxious person that um, just is really into camp. But in reality, you get here and there's so many different people, there's so many different personalities, and we all understand the same mission. We all understand the reason we're here, and uh, we're all working towards a common goal. I wish that more people knew just how fun it is. Um, I think there's like a misconception of people wanting to be home with their friends and go on vacations and do whatever at home, which is super fun, but there's also camp is super fun. And this place is literally set up for children to have fun and for them to experience joy and freedom. It's just the coolest job in the world. Um, I don't think we, we take into account how often we're doing things that no job will ever pay us to do. Um, and so it's, it's really cool. It's a cool thing to see all the crazy things that you get to do that are so random. It can be so simple um, and they're just like a blast and a half, um, but they also are just so like fulfilling. Where else do you have a space that's created just to have fun with these kids and like get to proclaim the gospel through your actions daily? And like what other time do you have like structured specifically for sharing the gospel? What's going to change my life forever because of being on summer staff, it's the testimonies that you get to hear from the kids through and through. You find yourself at these points thinking, are these second grade boys actually listening to me during talk back, during word? And then Friday night testimony service, they, they come up on stage and there are so many kids that come up every time. And just to hear them say that I'm a child of God through faith, it'll just wreck you. And it reminds you that like your mission is, it has a purpose. Like we're here for a reason. And so from that, like you just feel so like much more in love in the mission. And so it just, those moments, they'll change your life forever. They're changing that life every day. Welcome back to New Life News. In just a few days, New Life Ranch will host its sixth annual Flint and Steel Trail Run. Justin Metcalf has more about what to expect from this year's race. As fall moves into winter, many would think that the ranch gets a lot quieter. And while that may be the case for much of the winter months, that is certainly not the case on the first Saturday of each December. For the sixth year now, the annual Flint and Steel Trail Run will take place on December 2nd at Flint Valley. Race director Michaela Haverdink sees this as a great opportunity to get people out to the ranch and raise money for camper scholarships. Flint and Steel is number one about our Mission 1914 scholarship fund, having people to come out to see the ranch, see what we do here, um, but then also throw a fun event where we get to do something that's not our normal, typical summer camp or retreat setting, but it's a run that people can come out and see what we do here at camp. All the proceeds from the ranch go towards the Mission 1914 Camper Scholarship Fund, which helps get kids to camp regardless of their financial situation. That it is about our Mission 1914 Scholarship Fund, um, we never want funds to be a reason why a camper or family is not able to come to camp during the summer. And so our focus and our desire is that Flint and Steel is a really fun way to bring people out to camp to see what we do in our mission of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and equipping believers for ministry and tell them about our Mission 1914 scholarship fund so that campers um, and families can come to camp and hear the gospel during the summer. With this being her first year as the race director, Haverdink saw this as a good opportunity to refresh some aspects of the race. But this year, um, we're changing up the routes a little bit and we're going to be doing a 20K this year um, in place of our 25K. Haverdink says moving from a 25K to a 20K will allow for better course management, make it easier for race marshals to keep runners safe, and add to the overall energy of the race. This is Justin Metcalf reporting for New Life News. Hey, you guys are doing it!
Amelia, will you be competing in this year's race? Yes, Beth, I did run the 10K in 2020. And in 2023? What was that? Over the next several years, New Life Ranch Flint Valley will be getting some major improvements. Nicole Vorman has this story on what you can expect. For the last several years, the waterfront at New Life Ranch has seen significant changes as a result of erosion. Two years ago, they began construction on a new dam to help preserve the waterfront, as it is a central feature of camp. After many delays caused by engineering issues and multiple floods, Josh Collum, Executive Director of Facilities, is happy to report that the dam is nearly complete. We are nearly done with the dam. It has been a, a long road with ups and downs and floods, and we've seen a lot of work just wash away down the stream due to a couple days of rain in a row. Uh, and we are, we are very nearly done. The entire crown of the dam is done from one end to the other. The first two thirds of the dam is 100% finished, seeded in. There's grass growing on both sides of us now, which is just great to see. Uh, we're working on the last 5% of uh, just finishing the lower spillways on the downstream side of the dam. And then we have uh, a little bit of cleanup to do on our, our lay down areas. And uh, we should be out of here in about a month. The dam has been a major infrastructure project over the last two years and has taken a lot of time and effort from the team to complete. Colum knows the work was worth it because of what it will mean for the ranch for a long time to come. I think it's great how not only have we maintained the dam, but we've stabilized it. We've tried to create uh, a sustainable solution that will be around for a long, long time. Reduce our overall maintenance, reduce the contribution of sediment from erosion to the watershed, uh, and just create a healthier environment for this recreation to happen. With the dam project nearing completion, John Blair, the executive director of Flint Valley, is already looking forward to what is coming next. So as we're finishing up the dam, uh, project. Uh, we're really excited about what this means for the next two to three years uh, here at Flint Valley of how to um, how, how to leverage just the, uh, fl the Flint Creek that runs through uh, this central part of camp. There's a lot of uh, space on this end of camp that um, hasn't been uh, updated uh, in many years. Blair says the primary focus will be making the picnic area next to the creek much more comfortable and usable for guests. The area currently sits on a slope, so they hope to level off the ground for a better seating experience. They also have plans to update the building adjacent to the picnic area. Picnic area sits right next door to uh, a very historic building uh, in Heck Lodge. And so uh, this is a space that uh, we want to also uh, bring up to date um, for uh, the use, it's a very popular motel unit uh, where uh, groups uh, like to um, do little small uh, kind of gatherings, maybe 10 to 15 people, but they have a living room, a little kitchen, uh, and a space to do planning retreats and, and time away uh, from uh, church life uh, in, a, in a comfortable uh, house area. Finally, the Westwoods Cabin Complex is due for a renovation, as it is now the oldest complex on camp, having been built in the early 90s. Uh, buildings that are 20 to 30 years old and just need uh, some updating and cosmetic uh, care. So bringing Westwoods up to the same standard uh, that we've done in all of our uh, newer cabin areas. This is Nicole Vorman reporting for New Life News. Thanks, Nicole. I, for one, am shocked to learn that Westwoods are now the oldest cabins at camp. Me too. I remember being on summer staff. Those were the premier cabins to be in. Wait, if those cabins are now the oldest on camp, does that mean that we're now the oldest on camp? <laughs> no, 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 no. Rush Schultz is still around. Good point. We'll be back after the break.
Welcome back. We end tonight's broadcast featuring the voice of New Life Ranch, Mr. Rancy Sharp. Man, when he talks, it feels like I'm getting a warm hug from his voice. Well, Beth, I think you're really going to enjoy this next video. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that? It's my rancy voice. Does it feel like I'm giving you a warm hug? <laughs> no, it sounds like you're throwing hot gravel in my ear. Okay, fine. I'm going to leave it to the best. Take it away, Rancy. What is camp worth? What is a new group of friends worth? What is getting to try something new worth? What is exploring God's creation worth? What is hearing the good news of Jesus worth? In 1958, Reverend Willard Heck founded New Life Ranch with the mission to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and equip believers for ministry. From the beginning, he never wanted finances to get in the way of kids having the opportunity to come to camp and experience the love of Jesus. At first, kids who memorized a certain number of verses received a scholarship to be able to attend camp. Then in December of 1963, he founded the Needy Children's Program, writing in his journal, We all agree that now is the time to begin a Needy Children's Program, and by faith ask the Lord to meet the bills. There are so many boys and girls in spiritual need who the Lord could reach through the NLR summer program. Thirty years later, in 1993, Lena Blackwell, the wife of Randy Blackwell, executive director of New Life Ranch from 1979 to 1998, wrote, We rejoice that gifts earmarked for scholarships enabled us to award $10,190 in scholarships to campers who could not have come otherwise. When David Jacobs became executive director in 1998, he approached the board of directors about making a concerted effort to grow the amount of scholarships New Life Ranch was awarding each year. I talked to the board about expanding the scholarships. Uh, it was not real expensive to come to New Life Ranch, but for some people, it was real expensive. And as we were talking about it, uh, it was, again, an easy sell. They, they agreed with that. One of the things that, that I said, I don't want to ever stand before Jesus and say, I didn't let Susie come to camp because her parents didn't have enough money. <laughs> and nobody else wanted to say that either. So we wanted to make it where Susie could come to camp. In Matthew 19, 14, Jesus says, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. This verse captured the heart of NLR's desire to allow every kid to come to camp, and the scholarship fund was renamed to the Mission 1914 Camper Scholarship Fund. From 1958 until David Jacobs became executive director in 1998, New Life Ranch awarded a half million dollars in scholarships. After his push to grow the fund, in the last 25 years, NLR has awarded nearly $6.5 million in scholarships to thousands of campers. So what is camp worth? We'll let these campers and families tell you. So I think it's important for kids to come to camp because you get to learn about God. That's the most important thing. You life friends, it gives me a marvelous feeling of being outdoors, enjoying what God gave us and being with Him in New Life Ranch. Like, there's nothing I don't look forward to. The counselors, the kids, um, stuff he gets to do, uh, stuff he learns. He just, he comes back and he's on fire for God. When they talk, I really take it to heart and I think about it. Well, summer camp's usually like the highlight of my summer. I've learned more about God. I can tell my parents and then I can tell my little brothers and I can tell everybody at home. In this place and you just, I don't know, it's just something clicks and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm safe, it's gonna be okay. And I think it's because of the fact that you're going to chapel every day, you're talking to God every day. 
The most important thing I've taken away from summer camp this past few years would probably be that God loves me no matter what. I used to not be like to believe things that people had told me about God. And then just like a whole bunch of people were working through me with it. And it started to make more sense. Coming here for three years taught me a lot and taught me how to have peace. Like scholarships helped me a lot throughout the three years because my family struggled to get money. That first year I had to, I like applied and I got it. I got the scholarship and I was like really happy. So many generous donors have made this possible and the eternal impact of those donations made to the Mission 1914 Camper Scholarship Fund cannot be overstated. Kids who otherwise might not have been able to come to camp were given that chance. They made lifelong friends, experienced the beauty of God's creation, and felt the love of caring counselors. But most importantly, they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, some for the very first time. I would just say to people who, who think about contributing to New Life Ranch, or maybe, maybe have in the past, and maybe considering it again, um, you can think of the Haas family. I mean, you can think of families like us there in the community that would love to give our kids the experience at camp, if, if at all possible, uh, but that sometimes we're, we're not quite able to, um, and that you could make the difference um, in them going to camp and having a great summer, growing spiritually, and, and just all the development that happens. We have benefited so much, and, and God has used New Life Ranch and our family in, in big, big ways. What a great way to end the show with a warm hug from Rancy's voice. Thanks for watching and have a great evening, everyone. Please stop. <laughs>